Last meeting, we started with dynamics. And we learned dynamics mean motion. Body in a motion. So we need to learn some basics. We have three main components or three main uh, um, equations. Before starting, we have something called time. T. We have something called uh, displacement or position. Displacement. S. We have something called velocity. V. We have something called acceleration. A. We have four main components. Time, displacement, velocity, acceleration. We have a good relationship between them. Velocity equal differentiation of position related to time. Acceleration equal differentiation of velocity related to time. In a different way, I can say displacement equal integ uh, I'm sorry, integration of velocity with respect to time. I can say velocity equal integration of acceleration with respect to time. These, info, these relationships are very important. We need to learn that acceleration is rate change of velocity which means dv by dt rate change time rate change of velocity so acceleration equal dv change of velocity with respect to time velocity i can say it's a rate change of uh Displacement, so ds by dt, v velocity equal ds change of displacement, change of position with respect to time. From this one, dv equal a time dt. If you multiply this one by this one and this one by one, I can get this relationship. If you do integration, V equal integration of acceleration dt. So if the velocity is given, I can figure out the acceleration. If the acceleration is given, I can figure out the velocity. Math calculations. The same thing here. If you multiply ds by 1 and dt by v, I can get, or I can say, ds equal v dt. So, s equal integration of v dt. Any question so far for this relationship? These relationships are very important. It's a relationship between velocity, acceleration, Displacement and the time, the four components in dynamic. Any question so far? If you have any question, let me know. Okay, I will start, I will skip few slides and I will start with example number three. Given the position of a particle moving along the x axis, is given by s is given by a function of time t square minus t 
plus 8 where s is in units of meter and t in second find the velocity of the bartic at time equal 5 second okay it's very easy velocity equal rate change of displacement with respect to time differentiation of displacement differentiation of position of the bartic with respect to time can you tell me what is the differentiation of this equation with respect to time do you remember that from math t square will be 2 time t with power 2 minus 1 which is 1 minus differentiation of t will be 1 differentiation of 8 it's a constant differentiation of constant equals 0 so velocity the equation for velocity will be 2t minus 1 we are looking for velocity at time equal 5 okay go ahead v at t equal 5 will be 2 time 5 minus 1 2 time 5 equal 10 minus 1 equal 9 meter per second what do you think very easy very easy if you put this relationship in your mind acceleration with respect to velocity velocity with respect to displacement or position in the differentiation format or integration format one more time do you have any question do you have any question looks very easy one more time we have a partic the position is given by the expression so s is given as a function of time 3.4 t cube minus 5.4 t what is most nearly the acceleration we are looking for acceleration how much a t equal five second okay if you differentiate this dis displacement or this position with respect to time you can get velocity okay go ahead differentiation of 3.4 t cube do you know it will be 10.2 t square differentiation of negative 5.4 t will be negative 5.4 but i'm not looking for velocity i'm looking for acceleration so acceleration equal differentiation of velocity with respect to time so i have a, an equation here for velocity go ahead and differentiate it one more time so 10.2 t squared will be 20.4 t negative 5.4 is a constant differentiation of a constant is zero i have an equation for acceleration as a function of t can you tell me at t equal five seconds what is the value of the acceleration it will be 102 meter per second square meter per second square i am done I am done. It's very easy. One more example. Example number four. One more example. We have a particle. The rectilinear motion is represented by equation S equal 20 T plus 4 T square minus 3 T cube. What is most nearly the particle? the initial velocity okay regardless initial or final or or whatever 
how can I get the velocity? Velocity from displacement equal ds by dt. Piece of cake. Go ahead and differentiate. If you cannot differentiate, it is a big issue. It's a big issue. Please be careful. 20t will be 20. Plus 4t squared will be 8t. Minus 3t cubed will be minus 9t squared. Guys, I have question and I need answer. What is the meaning of initial? If I'm looking for initial uh, velocity, initial displacement, initial acceleration, initial, initial anything, what is the meaning of the word initial? Do you have answer? What is the meaning of initial? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Initial means at the beginning. Initial quantity means at the beginning. That means at t equal zero at the beginning of the motion t equal zero so the example looking for initial velocity means v at t equal zero okay go ahead and put t equal zero to figure out the velocity i believe it will be 20 plus zero minus zero it will be 20 meter per second that makes sense. So the previous example give you a certain or a specific time. So you put this time in the equation to figure out the quantity, acceleration or velocity. But in this example, the example did not give you certain time, but uh, it give you another uh, expression which called initial. One more example. We have a particle, the rectilinear motion is represented by the equation S equal 40t plus 5t square minus 8t cube. What is most nearly the initial acceleration? That's fine. Okay. Let's start figure out the velocity first. Because velocity coming after displacement equal differentiation of displacement with respect to time. It will be 40 plus 10t minus 24t squared. One more time. If you are looking for acceleration, acceleration equal dv by dt. One more time. D differentiation for this one. 40 is a constant, 0. 10t will be 10 minus 48t. I have equation right now for acceleration. Can you tell me what is the initial acceleration? So I'm going to put t equal 0 and figure out the value of acceleration. It will be 10 meter per second square. Because negative 48 times 0 will be 0. Any question so far? Any question so far? Looks, looks good. Until this moment, I believe dynamics is just math calculation. It's a relationship between velocity, displacement, acceleration with respect to time. Any question so far? Okay. One more example. Example number two. Example number two. The acceleration of a particle moving along a straight line is directly proportional to its displacement. We have a relationship between acceleration and displacement. That's fine. That's fine. No problem. A equal to
S. Just a second. I'm sorry, I have a mistake here in this problem. I'm sorry. Uh, this one, A, acceleration, please fix it in your PDF file. Acceleration equal to T, not to S. Doesn't make sense. Where A is in meter per second square and T in second. If the particle has a velocity of through the origin, okay, its velocity at t equal four second will be. So every s, please move it to t, and the unit is second. Okay, one by one. So the acceleration is given to T. Guys, just to remind you for something. Velocity equal dS by dT. I believe I will not use this one because I don't have anything about S. Acceleration equal dV by dT. I think I can start from here, but uh, I'm looking for velocity. So dV equal acceleration dt, that means V will be integration of A dt. Do you like that? So this time I will integrate, not differentiate like the last uh, examples. So velocity, will be integration of acceleration with respect to time. Acceleration is given as a function of t, 2t. We need to integrate this expression with respect to t. Can you tell me what is the final equation for velocity? Do you know how we can integrate? Do you remember that? Increase the power by one and divide by the new power. What is the power for t? t to power one. Please increase it by one so it will be t squared. And divide by the new power. I will divide by two. Don't forget we have two originally. But uh, we have a constant of integration because it's unlimited integration. It's unlimited. So we have constant of integration. Guys, do you remember that? It's a big issue if you don't. Uh, if we have integration for x cubed, for example, dx, integration for x cube i'm gonna we have five here i will put five i have no problem with five x cube i will increase the power by one so it will be x to power four and the divide by the new power because this integration is unlimited we don't have number here and number here limits so we have constant of integration that's fine. Do you have any question for this point? Okay. So how can I figure out the value of this constant? We have something called boundary condition. I believe you heard about this in the math course. We have something here very interesting. If the particle, the velocity is two meter per second, as it passes through the origin. 
Orge means initially. Initially means at the beginning. So I can say at t equals zero at the beginning, initially, velocity equal two meter per second. Can you put these two numbers in this equation? To figure out the value of the constant, yeah, I can. So velocity equal to two times zero square divide two plus constant. This term will be zero. That means the value of the constant equal to. That means the final the final equation for velocity will be two. T square divide two plus two, the value of the constant. The last part of this problem, what is the velocity at t equal four? Okay, at t equal four, I can get the velocity two times four square divide two plus two equal. Eighteen meter per second. Do you have any question? So, probably, if the problem give you starting by displacement, I will do differentiation to figure out the velocity and acceleration if the acceleration is given so i will do integration to figure out the velocity probably i will do another integration to figure out the displacement but be, remember this integration is unlimited integration so you have to keep a constant of integration to figure out the value of this constant of integration you need to search for something called boundary condition this boundary condition will help you to figure out the value of the constant. Once you get the constant of integration, you have the full equation to figure out what you want. Are we not supposed to cancel the nominator and dominator when integrating in this problem? You can, yeah. Two divide two, you can cancel this one by this one. That's fine. I'm keeping everything uh, to remember, just to remind you when you're uh, studying. But you can cancel two by two. Yeah, you can cancel, uh, cancel them. That's fine. All of these examples are talking about something called rectilinear motion. Motion in a straight line. So we have S in a straight line, V in a straight line, A in a straight line, and time T, which is the time of movement. And we learn it the relationship between these quantities with respect to time. We have another type of motion, which called circular motion. Probably we have a gear uh, rotating in a machine or something like this. Uh, so we have a particle, this particle is rotating in a circular motion. At this time, we have different expressions, but the same meaning. What you mean? Okay. Let me ask you a good question. We have a particle moving in this circular motion. What is the difference between this position and this position and this position and this position and this position? 
I think this one has R, this one has the same 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 R. So R is not a good expression to figure out the position of this particle. We need to search with another expression. We can call it theta. Angular position. If you assumed we have a reference here, so this position at theta probably equal 60 degree. This position at theta equal 120. Probably this position at theta equal 170. Probably this position at theta equal 210. This position at theta equal 320. So I can express the position of the particle in this motion by theta, angular position. We have something called omega, angular velocity. Omega equal d theta by dt. Or, do you remember that? Theta dot. Also, I can exhibit uh, this relationship by the same meaning. I can say here V equal S dot. Acceleration equal V dot. Did you hear about this expression before? S dot means first differentiation of S with respect to time. So, in your notes, I'm saying here omega, which called angular velocity, equal theta dot means differentiation of theta with respect to time. The same meaning. The same meaning for this one. But for rectilinear motion, I'm call it V. For circular motion, I'm call it omega. For uh, rectilinear motion, I'm call it S. For circular motion, I'm call it theta. We have another expression called alpha, which is called angular acceleration. which equal w omega dot d omega with respect to time. Or I can call it theta double dot. I, I will not uh, confuse you by mathematic expression. So let's say omega is d theta by dt alpha d omega by dt if you are talking about circular motion we have a particle moving in circular motion any questions so far Let's do example number one. Let's do example number one. We have a gear starts from rest and the angular position theta is given to T cube minus seven T square. I will cancel this line. I'm sorry, I have some mistakes in this slide. I'm looking for what is the angular velocity and angular acceleration at t 
equal to second. So, if we have circular motion and the theta is given, I can differentiate this theta with respect to time to figure out the angular velocity. I can differentiate the angular velocity with respect to time to figure out the value of angular acceleration. Life is easy. So, omega, which is angular velocity, equal d theta by dt. Sometimes we can call it theta dot. Go ahead and differentiate. 6 t square minus 14 t at time equal to second omega equal 6 times 2 square minus 14 times 2. What is the value? 6 times 4 minus 28. It will be negative 4 radian per second. One more time. Alpha which is angular acceleration, it will be d omega by dt. We have equation here for omega. Please go ahead and differentiate it one more time. It will be 12 t minus 14 at t equal to second. I can figure out the value of alpha. 12 times 2 minus 14 i think it will be 10 radian per second square any question so the first part in dynamics is very important it's very very important very easy uh, we have a relationship between the main component of motion displacement or position velocity and acceleration you need to figure out what type of motion you are talking about if you are talking about rectilinear motion in a straight line so we are talking about something called s v a and the time if you are talking about circular motion we are talking about something called theta angular velocity angular acceleration and the time different expressions but the same meaning and the same relationship same meaning and the same relationship example number one example number two example number three example number four any question so far? Any question so far? By the way, I skipped slide number five. Please don't read it. By the way, example uh, slide number five give you a relationship between linear or rectilinear and circular. I can I have a relationship between these expression S V and the A and theta omega and alpha. This is slide just showing you what is the relationship between this motion and this motion. It's not a big deal for us in this course. So slide number five give you a relationship between the rectilinear motion which is s velocity a acceleration and the circular motion which is theta uh, omega and alpha so s equal r theta v equal r omega 
acceleration equal r alpha, where r is the radius of the circular motion. 